So this is the fun. This is the fun part for me because um, I love meeting our full members and getting to know a little bit more about them. And there's always a surprise, and we play a funny game, and it's it's great fun. So um, I'm Mark Wormsley. I'm the founder of the Arts and Culture Network. For those I haven't met, um, we're at sixty one thousand across our four LinkedIn groups at the moment, um, and we've just tipped over. The one million post views per month mark um, in our main group, which is very exciting, and I'm delighted to be joined by Richard Crossman. Uh, Richard is one of our truly valued members. Comes to lots of our events, engages beautifully, and and is a delight um, every time we meet. So, Richard, thank you so much for joining me today to do this interview. It's a pleasure to be here, Mark. I'm really enjoying my association with ACN. Good. I'm so pleased. Now, for the benefit of, of our viewers who haven't had the pleasure of meeting you as I have, um, we should explain why Albus Dumbledore is sitting behind you, really. <laughs> well, I am an actor and I do a lot of work with um, live characters at festivals, events, um, corporate events, uh, all sorts of different things. And Albus Dumbledore, or the headmaster of a very famous wizarding school, in order to avoid the copyright infringement, um, is one of my main characters that I get called upon to do a great deal. Um, so I have the, the full costume, I have a collection of the um, props and so on from Harry Potter films, and uh, I have a number of actors who will work with me if I need to bring others with me, and we show up at uh, wizarding events at um, summer festivals at all different sorts of things that's great um i love that and and the other and of course the other um character who people will not be surprised to learn uh, you you have an association with shall we say is um is father christmas and you very kindly last year recorded a, a dedicated message from for us that i then shared with all of our, our members which was just fantastic um, tell me a little bit about about that and how that started well let's take a trip to the mail room at the north pole love it um santa claus actually is in my blood um at three years old i did my first performance on stage reciting a poem by uh, Clement Clark Moore. It was the night before Christmas. And at the age of 10, we have photographs of me in a Santa Claus suit handing out gifts Christmas morning. So Santa is in my blood. Um, goodness, I've been doing this professionally now for almost 40 years. Um, for the first number of years, I used the designer wigs and beards and things like that. And then in 2008, I started to grow um, this thing and the hair is longer too, although you can't see it with the green screen behind me. Um, mm. And I keep it trimmed and so on, but I'm, I'm what's known as a real bearded Santa. And I, do, I don't do shopping centers and that sort of thing. I do a lot of work with photo photographic studios, uh, corporate events, private visits, all of that sort of thing. And I also do virtual visits over Zoom. And uh, then two years ago, I started doing video Christmas cards uh, for individuals, families, and companies. We write the script together or they have a script they want to use. Uh, I record it and then they can send it out, do whatever they want with it, post it on their website, on YouTube, on whatever. And I've also done some recordings, um, pre-recording so that they could be played on Christmas morning for, for families as well. So. Uh, it's a big part of what I do, uh, along with the other characters that I play. Yeah, well, I, 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 I was delighted with what you did for us last year. It was fantastic. And there will be, I, I can think of a family, we've got a four-year-old um, who would absolutely love it. So, so watch this space. But I also gather there is a little bit of an intrigue between the two characters we've just described. Um, and, and I love this. This is, this is, um, this is, this is, my um, daughter is a, a Harry Potter nut, and um, she considers herself to be a trivia master in the in in her fandom. So she will um, 
I'm going to I'm going to invent a question for her so that I can ask her. But th I found this fascinating. So remind me of the 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 uh, the, the, the uh, what what how would you describe it? It's an anomaly almost. It's a it's a point of mystery. It, um, it is a point between, of mystery. Yeah, um, it's it's maybe what one would call a fan theory. Uh, but okay. if you are if you are knowledgeable about the Harry Potter books, there is only one Christmas morning or one Christmas day where Albus Dumbledore is actually noted to be at Hogwarts. And right. I'm positing the idea that the only that the reason for that is that he has other responsibilities on Christmas. Right. OK. Nod, nod, wink, wink. Excellent. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I love it. Now, he's so not, when you're not doing either. He is Sorry, often what? described as having a twinkle in his eye. So, you know. Yes. Yeah. So when you're not doing one of those two famous characters, um, I gather you do um, your voice actor. Um, and you've been working on a, um, um, I love, I, I, this is just lovely, the notes I've made. So Richard Crossman, actor, voice actor, refined, re sorry, refined, it probably is refined, retired pastry chef and opera singer. There's a polymath in, in here. Um, but tell me about the, um, and I know you do, you've recorded an autobiography for somebody who's quite famous, um, and uh, tell me, tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, unfortunately, I can't give you a lot of details until the book actually comes out. Um, sure. It's recorded. It's now in the hands of the engineers and the publishers. But um, it is an autobiography of a fellow from the southern United States who, over the course of 40 years, was uh, very big in the radiology and magnetic re resonance imaging field. Uh, in terms of medical treatment down in the southern United States, and in fact, all over the United States. Mm. Uh, it was a very interesting project, and I love doing audiobooks because I learned so much from, it, from every one of them. But the fun part about this one was that this gentleman was born in Mississippi. He lived in Florida, and he lived in Texas. So the publisher was looking for a slight, slight southern U.S. accent for... Uh, recording the the script of the book so I had to uh, create that from my repertoire of other characters and I uh, had a great deal of fun playing with it without going too far south which I can do if you want to go all the way down to Texas but uh, just a slight slight U.S. accent southern U.S. accent to to uh, improve the quality of the book and give a little bit more of the author in the, in the recording so it I was fun that. There's a gentleman in London who used to stand in Covent Garden um, and he would challenge people to say a word to him and he would place them their home within miles. Mm -hmm. um, and the word was W-A-T-E-R. He could tell from that word because, you know, if you're estuary English, um, Cockney is water, mm -hmm. water. Um, if you're in Surrey or Berkshire, it's probably water, darling, mm -hmm. water. Um, but and Newcastle would be water, water, and so that be Welsh would be different, Cornish, mm -hmm. uh, Midlands, Birmingham, Scottish, water. <laughs> it's going up there. You want some water, laddie? <laughs> there we go. You see, yeah. <laughs> so that's brilliant. And now I must ask. I mean, I love this. The, the thought of a steampunk Alice in Wonderland. Um, so please tell me about, you know, you're heavily involved in this, I think. It's a festival. I am. I, As I said, um, I've been doing characters for uh, festivals for decades now. Um, I play sometimes historical characters, sometimes fictional characters. Um, a historical park has decided they wanted to do a, a steampunk festival, Alice in Wonderland themed this year. Uh, the, par the historical site is actually a, an estate from a local family who lived there for over a hundred years. And when the last scion of the family passed away, it was turned over to the historical park board here in, in Canada. 
So they're looking to bring more people into the site and decided they wanted to create a steampunk festival. And as I have a lot of experience with those, um, there was myself and one other person that they contacted and Susie, who had run her own festival for 10 years said, you know, take Richard, He'll, he knows what he's doing, dude, let, let him work with you. So I've been working on developing the skeleton the structure of the festival with the organizers because they had no clue whatsoever when they were getting going. And it's been my responsibility to hire the actors, write the scripts. And as I'm also a costume designer and builder, I've been building the costumes for the main characters, which will be the red and white queen, Alice, the Hatter and the white rabbit. And we put a few twists in, um, into the story. We're using the basic story, but we put a few twists in just to have some fun with people. So uh, it's coming up in mid-August, so we're in the midst of rehearsals now. We're doing a living chess game, so I've got uh, a fight director who's working with our actors doing some stage fighting, and, and that will be part of the chess game instead of mm -hmm. just one man taking over one piece, taking over another piece of spot. They actually have to fight for it, so uh, it'll be... seen that before as well. That is, yeah, that's it'll be of... an interesting interesting day, I think. That's brilliant. And where where will that be? It's in a very small town in Southern Ontario called Cayuga. It's right on the Grand River and the estate is actually right on the banks of the Grand River. It's a very large piece of property. They've got hiking trails and all sorts of things there. They take tours through the mansion, there are outbuildings. So we're going to have entertainers. We've got music musicians coming in. We've got a radio DJ coming in. Uh, late afternoon, they're bringing in a hot air balloon for tethered um, hot air balloon rides, vendors, we've got uh, croquet, we've got all sorts of things happening. So it's going to be a fun day. Brilliant. Sounds wonderful. Listen, thank you so much for, for, for joining me today for this. We've got more to do in a moment, but um, I just wanted to let people know that um, wherever this appears, there'll be links to Richard's website, LinkedIn profile, so you can get in touch. Um, across his whole range of um, activities. So um, characters like Al Albus, um, Santa, uh, voice, voiceover, voice acting, um, and of course the, the, the sort of production consultation for festivals like that, I think is fantastic. Oh, look, there he is again. And if you, if you happen to be in Southern Ontario on Saturday this week, the King Richard I will be there with his wife, Queen Berengaria, knighting all the kids, having some fun. Brilliant. I love that. That's great. <laughs> Thank you so much, Richard. Now we're going to um, switch gears um, because I'm going to, we're going to do the, um, that's a great idea. There's the um, QR code. Brilliant. Um, we're going to do the arts and culture hot top 10. So I'm going to ask you for your favorite across 10 different art forms. Um, it often sparks anecdotes um, um, and, and it's, there's always a surprise in there somewhere, which I love. So I don't think we've done this before, have we? No, we haven't. Right. It's going to be some, something we'll do annually so that we can um, see if, you're, if, you're, if it changes, which is fun. So my first question for you is, do you have a favourite building? Oh, goodness. Um... There are many actually, but I think I could probably say that the Tower of London is my favorite. Nice, I love that. I love the Tower of London. There is a, a particular beef eater, you know, the red cloaked mm -hmm. guards who uh, does a very, very funny tour. Um, he's, he's very... I think we actually had him when we were there in 2016. <laughs> Um, my my grandparents are are British, uh, and great grandparents are also from the UK. So I have a real love of British history, geography, politics, and I follow it a lot. Mm. Um, and it was actually my intention when I was in elementary school to become a history teacher because of that. Things changed, mm. um, but yeah, I love I love that, and uh, I love the the Tower of London. We went to see the Crown Jewels, and we did have a very humorous beef eater take us on the tour and we met the raven master as well oh lovely and they used to have they used to keep lions in the um the moat yep. didn't they the dry moat yep. um i don't know if you saw it was i don't know whether it was 60 it might have been earlier than 16 
Do you remember the Poppy um, art installation? Yes, it was not there when we were there. It was after that, I think. Um, but I do have photographs of it on my on my computer here. The, yeah. It was just spectacular. Spe uh, uh, genius um, yeah. outdoor art, really simple as well. And everybody got mm -hmm. to and everybody got to buy one. Yeah, uh, you could you could auction. They were auctioned, so it raised a fortune. Okay, what about a favorite book? Oh goodness. Well. The first thing off most people would think would be Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. uh, but in actual fact, I would have to say The Hobbit. Mm. Um, I first read it in my first year of university uh, and then went on to read pretty much everything else Tolkien has written since then, including the Christopher Tolkien collections. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I think on an equal footing with that would be C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia. Mm. Yeah, uh, I think for a, a period of about 10 years when I was younger, I think I read Lord of the Rings every every year for, for a decade. Mm -hmm. But um, yes, I, I discovered um, The Hobbit. I love it. Um, and, but I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that you managed to get through the Silmarillion and Gawain and mm -hmm. um, what's the other, what are the other ones? Uh, Gawain the Green Knight, isn't it? Um, yeah, um, Tales of Tom Bombadil. Yes, yes. Uh, and then there's all the collections that Christopher Tolkien pulled together from his father's various writings and yeah. tried to fill in some of the gaps. But, it's, but I was, very, he, I was very, very fortunate early on after I read the book the first time, I ran across in a bookstore uh, a boxed edition of The Hobbit with all of Tolkien's original uh, artwork. Wow. So that is a prized possession. Yeah, it, it, I, I can imagine. Fantastic. My the other, my brother's a cellist, and he's um, until recently was a member of the London Philharmonic Orchestra, and so he got to play on all of the soundtracks, mm -hmm. which was fantastic. Um, very lucky for, for, for all of that. And the and the and the and t what did you make of the movies as a um, as a an attempt at bringing that book? to life well i i have a philosophy about movies that are made from books there is no possible way you can recreate any book in a movie uh firstly for detail secondly for the fact that 800 people read the book and it's 800 different movies in their head mm. so i look at the book as one entity, I look at the movie as another entity, and as long as there's continuity, as long as there's um, plot lines, as long as they, everything flows within the movie itself, yes, there are things missing, there are things they couldn't put in, the things they didn't want to put in, yes, okay, I understand that, the movie itself is fine, the book itself is fine, and never the twain shall meet. The movie's inspired by the book, it's not a reproduction of the book, it can't be. No, it can't be. You're right. I was I was terrified because I'd seen some earlier attempts and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, but we did Trilogy Tuesday. And at the time I was running a web design agency and we were all fans. And um, so on the day it was possible, on the first day it was possible to do so, my colleague, we took the, closed the office for the day. They all came to mine for breakfast and we watched The Fellowship. Um, mm -hmm. then we had some lunch and then we watched Two Towers and then we jumped on a train to get to Leicester Square in central London to watch the first public showing of The Return of the King. So we did Trilogy Tuesday, I think they used to call it. Mm -hmm. I love, love it. Anyway. Yeah, the, the 1977 half animated version was not a good version. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No. And that's what <laughs> I imagine. But I love this story that um, I've watched the documentaries. And have you seen the reunion on YouTube as well? Yes. During lockdown? Um, yes. I found that very emotional. Yeah, um, yeah. They they all became extremely good friends over that. Yes, and they they all had the same tattoo, the fellowship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, they lived together for three years, so I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the money was amazing. I I read somewhere that it it cost three hundred million dollars to make all three movies, mm -hmm. and the first one took six hundred dollars at the box office. Six hundred mm -hmm. million dollars at yep. the box office alone. They they made a fortune on the films. Oh, and incredible. I mean, the first one, it was the last one that got the Oscar. 
you know, yeah, New Line uh, Cinema, New Line Cinema really invested well. Yeah, and then he, I, I, there's one interview with Peter Jackson where um, he was he he was terrified that they, that they were going to try and make him do it in one movie. Mm-hmm. He was pitching two movies, and I can't remember who it was. Ironically, it might have been the, the um, who was the filmmaker who's been disgraced for uh, uh, Harvey. Oh, Weinstein. Yeah, I think he. I think it was him who said this is this can't be two movies peter and his head you know he's on he said if the book is three three books make three movies <laughs> you know yeah here's, here's the money inspired decision really so yeah. anyway we're digressing beautifully which i knew we would do um <laughs> oh, 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 oh. right so um what about um here we go. I want you to imagine you've been exiled from Canada. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you can choose where you live based on, on your perception of the culture of that country. Where would you choose to live? Two options. Scotland and New Zealand. Nice. Okay. Is the New Zealand a, a, a Lord of the Rings link or or not? It, it's partly that. Um, I have friends who were from there, and I know a lot about the culture there. I know a lot about the the whole attitude of people there, and I love any any New Zealander I've ever met has just been absolutely gracious, mm. and I would love. I, it's on my bucket list to visit, but that would be one of the places I would go. Mm. Um, Another, the other place is Scotland, partly because of the heritage of my family. Um, my grandfather was born near Balmoral Castle in Blair Gallery, mm. um, but also um, because of the history there and the proximity to the rest of the UK so that I can pop over the border and visit and do, hit, hit all the historical stuff that I wanted to hit. So Brilliant. Love that. I love and I love haggis. <laughs> yeah, who doesn't? Neeps and neeps and, neeps and tatties um excellent um now as a as a spectator or a participant do you have a favorite sport um as a spectator i sometimes watch baseball although i haven't done that for quite some time Uh, i was a golfer for a while that didn't last long Mm -hmm. um as a participant uh horseback riding and croquet nice you see, there's there's always a surprise. I love it. I love it. Um, now, this one's quite cruel. Um, I'm going to restrict you to one genre of music for the rest of your life. What are you going to choose? Hmm. goodness there are three you can only have one but i can only have one um and it's John is genre ra- genre rather than artist so you yeah i love that. i love the music of the the 30s 40s and and early 50s the crooners and and those guys mm-hmm. um classical music of course because of my opera training mm. musical theater because again i did a lot of performing in musical theater mm. um I think I'm going to go with musical theater as long as I can be selective about what I want to hear. Yes, you can. As long as it fits that genre. There's a lot of there's a lot of modern musical theater that doesn't do anything for me. Right. Yeah. You don't. You, you get to choose. Right. Yeah. Um, now, do you have a favorite visual artist? Oh yes, no question there, Vincent Van Gogh. And why would that be? I love his style. I love the um, the variations of interpretations that he used over the over the course of a very very short career, only ten years really. Mm. Um, and I had the opportunity when we were in Amsterdam to visit the Van Gogh Museum, and we were able to get within about eighteen inches of a lot of his work. Mm. without glass between us so it was it was an incredible incredible um the tour guide normally says she normally spent between an hour and a half and two hours we spent four wow 
Uh, it was just incredible to see the, 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 the techniques and the, he did dozens and dozens of self portraits and you can see in every one of them what I think he was feeling at the time because every one of them is different. Mm. Somebody once told me that they'd been to that museum and they were able to get quite close mm. and they, they hadn't realized how thick the paint was and that it, it looked as though it was still wet. Yeah, some of some of the paintings is just layers upon layers upon layers. And we were fortunate when we were there, they actually had a, a, um, a short term special display. I think it's on until September of I think it was about 25 works from his last three months of Ooh. his life and to see um, some of the changes that were happening in his life. And it was just incredible to see. Mm. Love that. I love that. Now, do you have a favorite play or musical? Oh, yes. The Phantom of the Opera. Mm. I auditioned for that show many times and never made it in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, I love that. I, I, I've seen that several times in London, which was great. Um, yes, I've seen it here in Toronto. I've seen it in London twice. It was, yeah. it's just incredible. I was very fortunate. I was studying music at the Guildhall School of Music and Drama when um, Les Miserables was first performed mm -hmm. in the Barbican Centre. So I, I got to see it at the R, by the RSC at the, um, in the Barbican before it transferred. When um, we were there, when we were there in 2016, it was the anniversary year. They did the big show at the Royal Albert Hall. Mm. Um, but unfortunately, we were leaving two days before the show at the at the Royal Albert Hall. Not that we could have afforded the tickets anyway, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what about a favorite film? Oh, goodness. Yes. It's a film called Deep in My Heart with Jose Ferrer. Okay, I've not had that one before in this. It's this it's point. a biographical film on the life of Sigmund Romberg. Deep in my heart. Mm -hmm. I shall be going to Prime or Netflix to see if I can find that. Nice. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have I have a VHS copy of it. I have never yet found a DVD. So. Oh, so it's unlikely to be streaming anywhere. It won't but... likely be streaming unless maybe you hit Turner Classic Movies or something like that. But right, well, we'll give it a try. We'll give well, I'll, have, I'll give it a try. Um, and the last one on this section, um, you'll be pleased to know, is apart from me, who was the last person to make you laugh? Oh my goodness, that would be <laughs> that would be my business partner and performing partner. Uh, her name is Simone Riding Cunningham. She also portrays Mrs. Claus um, to to my Santa. Um, she and I always get together, and we have just a blast when we do. So she's definitely the last one that made me laugh. We were chatting last night and both cracking up. Brilliant! I love that. Those are lovely answers that and there, there's always a surprise in there and I loved it um that's great thank you very much Richard now just to finish off this um introduction of you to our fellow members um we're going to play the this or that game it's quite fast paced all um, right uh, you can have what oh and we've had a change of scenery love it <laughs> um you can only you have to have one and you can only have one yeah okay okay right are you ready I am ready Tea or coffee? Tea, no question. Radio or TV? Television. Car or motorcycle? Car. Comedy or horror? Comedy. Concert hall or sports stadium? Concert hall. Cat or dog? Cats, because of my lifestyle. Test the water or dive in the deep end? Ah, oh, I've done both. <laughs> Usually dive in. Okay. Bits or no bits in your orange juice? No bits. Library or museum? Mm, that's a tough one. 
museum? Beethoven or Mozart? Mozart. Santa or Dumbledore? Oh, that's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering the fact that Santa actually is Dumbledore and vice versa, I will say Santa. Then and you don't get you don't get to lose out. Excellent. Um, shower or bath? Shower. Um, be embarrassed or be afraid? Oh. Be embarrassed, I think. Okay. Cooking or being cooked for? Oh, that one's a tough one. Um, because I love both. I like to cook. Okay. Fiction or non-fiction? Uh, fiction. Patterned or plain? Would depend on the pattern, but usually patterned. Shopping online or in store? Again, depends what I'm looking for. Um, that's a tough one because I usually shop online to find out where stuff is and then go into the store and buy it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, let's I'll, stay I'll in store. That. Let's stay in store. That's when the money changes hands. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, reggae or salsa? Ooh, um, salsa. Indoors or outdoors? Usually indoors. Okay. Android or iPhone? iPhone, no question. Start immediately or wait until the last minute? Be honest. <laughs> I am. I'm waiting till the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking that answer. Science or history? History. New York or L.A.? New York. Circle or square? Circle. Early morning or late at night? Oh, I do both. Um, late at night. Messy desk or tidy desk? Oh, messy desk, no question. <laughs> See the future or change the past? See the future. I wouldn't want to change the past. Planning, planning it or winging it? Normally my planning ends up winging it anyway. So let's say planning it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, get, I know that you've done a lot of great work on that festival. That's got some planning involved, I'm sure. Yes, I do um, a lot of planning, but sometimes there's some winging in there too. Yeah, what's, the, um, what's, the, what's that lovely saying? The first casualty of a battle is the plan. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um bedroom door open or closed as long as the room's dark i don't care open right uh zombies or vampires oh vampires red or white wine white batman or superman Ooh, that's a tough one superman numbers or words words Basketball or baseball? Baseball. Mild or spicy? Spicy. The more the merrier. Opera or chamber music? Ooh. Opera. Uh, I thought you'd have to do that. Whiskey or rum? If it's scotch whiskey, definitely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> stripes or spots? Uh, stripes. And finally... Gold or silver? Oh, that one's a tough one. Look behind you. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm, going to, I'm, I'm a going silver to, man. I I wear a lot of silver jewelry. I don't wear a lot of gold, but a lot of my costumes are decorated in gold because mm. I play royal and regal and, and that kind of stuff. Mm. Probably gold by a hair. Gold by a hair. Perfect. This, was, this has been so much fun, Richard. Thank you so much. It's designed to allow our colleagues to feel as though they've got to know you a little bit without having had the pleasure of doing so yet. So do please contact Richard if you'd like to have a one-to-one -one with him across any of the polymath 
skills that he he has in our sector um, and thanks again for being one of our our full members Richard and for doing this today it's very kind I hope you enjoyed it it was a lot of fun Mark thank you so much for your time <laughs>